Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This video is about the fundamental period of the sum of two periodic sequences or discrete time signals. A discrete time signal, y of n, is periodic with a period big M, which is a non-zero integer, if for every small integer n, y of n plus m is equal to y of n. Note that if m is a period, then all the non-zero integer multiples of m are also periods. For instance, is 2m a period? Let's check y of n plus 2m. I can write down this as y of n plus big M plus m. Because y is a periodic signal with period m, then y plus any integer plus m is equal to y of that integer. But y of n plus m is equal to y of n. The equality between these two sides holds for every integer n. So 2m is indeed a period. What about minus m? If we take y of n minus m, this is an integer. By the definition of periodicity, this is equal to y of the same integer plus the period, which is big M. This is y of n. For every integer small n, y of n minus m is equal to y of n. Again, minus m is also a period. If m is a period, then any non-zero integer multiple of m is a period. So what is the fundamental period of the discrete time signal y of n? Big M is the fundamental period of periodic sequence y of n if it is the smallest strictly positive integer satisfying the condition of periodicity. Suppose that the periodic discrete time signal y of n has another period which is k. This means that we have this relation satisfied for every small integer n and also if we replace k by any non-zero integer multiple of k. What about k plus m? Is this a period? Yes, it is y of n plus k plus m, y of an integer plus m, which is a period, is y of the same integer. But k is also a period, so y of n plus k is equal to y of n. If k is a period, m is another period, their sum is a period. In fact, we can show that any integer combination of m and k, so long as it does not give us zero, is also a period for the periodic discrete time signal y of n. If m is the fundamental period, which means that it is the smallest positive integer satisfying the definition of periodicity, then k, if it is another period, it must be a multiple of m. Here is the reason. We know that any integer combination of m and k is a period. So y of n plus r m plus s k is equal to y of n for every integer n. The integer combinations of m and k are the multiples of the GCD, of the greatest common divisor of m and k. By Bizu lemma, there are values for r and s say r bar and s bar such that this integer combination is exactly the gcd of m and k this relation is valid for any integer combination of m and k so it is valid if we choose a small r to be equal to r bar and small s to be equal to s bar but this is equal to the gcd of m and k the gcd is a period but the gcd of m and k is less than or equal to m if the gcd is strictly less than m then we have a positive integer satisfying the definition of periodicity, and that is strictly less than m. But this contradicts the fact that m is the fundamental period. Therefore, the GCD of m and k must be equal to m. k must be an integer multiple of big M. The main question in this video is, if we have two periodic discrete time sequences, x1 and x2, x1 has a fundamental period, n1, and x2 has a fundamental period n2. What about the sum? Is the sum periodic? What is a period for the sum? And more importantly, what is the fundamental period of the sum? The sum is indeed periodic, and this is different from the continuous time case. If the domain of x1 and x2 is the set of real numbers, then we can have two continuous time signals. Both are periodic, but their sum is aperiodic. In the discrete time case, the sum of two periodic sequences must be periodic. And the LCM, the least common multiple of n1 and n2, is a period. To check this, let's investigate x, which is the sum of x1 and x2, of n plus the LCM of n1 and n2. By definition, this is x1 of n plus the LCM plus x2 of n plus the LCM. The least common multiple of n1 and n2 is a multiple of n1. What we have here? is x1 of n plus a multiple of n1, which is the fundamental period of x1. So this is equal to x1 of n. Similarly, the LCM of n1 and n2 is a multiple of n2. 
here we have x2 of n plus a multiple of n2, which is the fundamental period of the discrete time signal x2. This term here is x2 of n. And the sum of these two guys is x of n. And this equality here is for every integer small n. The sum of x1 and x2 is indeed periodic. And the LCM, the least common multiple of n1 and n2, is a period. But is it the fundamental period? The smallest strictly positive integer such that the condition for periodicity is satisfied. Suppose that big N is the fundamental period of the sum. Let's consider two sequences, x of n, which is the sum of x1 of n plus x2 of n, and minus x1 of n. If x1 of n is periodic signal with fundamental period n1, then minus x1 of n is also a periodic signal with fundamental period n1. Suppose that we add these two signals. By assumption, the fundamental period of x is big N and the fundamental period of minus x1 is n1. As we have seen on the previous page, the sum is periodic, and a period for the sum is the LCM. The sum of these two discrete time signals has a period, which is the LCM of n and n1. But if we sum these two sequences, we get x2 of n, and x2 of n is periodic with a fundamental period n2. So this is a period for the sum, which is x2, and n2 is the fundamental period. Also, we have seen on the previous page that if there is a period other than the fundamental period, then it must be a multiple of the fundamental period. The conclusion is that the LCM of n and n1 must be an integer multiple of n2. We take it to be alpha n2, where alpha is a positive integer. The positive integers n and n1 can be written in this way. n can be written as the product of the GCD of n and n1 times some positive integer beta. N1 can also be written in terms of the GCD. N1 is the GCD of N and N1 times a positive integer gamma. And of course, the GCD of beta and gamma must be equal to one. Beta and gamma are relatively prime. The LCM of N and N1 is the product beta times gamma times the GCD. But the GCD times gamma is equal to N1. The LCM of N and N1 can be written as n1 times beta. The LCM is a multiple of n2. Specifically, the LCM is equal to alpha n2. Then n1 times beta is equal to n2 times alpha. Let's divide both sides of this equation by the GCD of n1 and n2. Now divide both sides by n2 over the GCD. So alpha, which is a positive integer, is beta times n1 over the GCD. And in the denominator, we have this integer, n2, divided by the GCD of n1 and n2. What we have on the right-hand side must be a positive integer, which means that the numerator is divisible by the denominator. But these two integers here are co-prime. Their GCD is equal to one because we have n1 and n2, and we have already removed the greatest common divisor. Because the GCD of n1 over the GCD and n2 over the GCD is one, then we must have that beta is a multiple of what we have in the denominator. Beta is divisible by n2 divided by the GCD of n1 and n2. But n is equal to beta times this integer, which is the GCD of n and n1. If beta has a factor and beta is a factor of n, is a divisor of n, then the same factor of beta is a factor of n. In other words, since beta is divisible by this, then n, which is the fundamental period of the sum x1 plus x2, is also divisible by n2 divided by the GCD of n1 and n2. This is the conclusion here, that we must have the fundamental period of the sum as a multiple of n2, which is the fundamental period of the signal x2 divided by the GCD. We can repeat the same argument using x1 plus x2 and minus x2 of n. In a similar fashion, we can show that n is divisible by n1 over the GCD of n1 and n2. When we used minus x1 of n here, we got n2 over the GCD. If we replace it by minus x2, we get n1 over the GCD. The fundamental period of the sum must be a multiple of n1 over the GCD. Also, it must be a multiple of n2 over the GCD. Then the smallest possible value of n is the least common multiple of these two guys. The least common multiple of two integers that are co-prime is their product. Our conclusion is that the smallest possible value for the fundamental period of the sum, which is big N, 
is n1 n2 divided by the gcd squared the product of the integers n1 and n2 can be written as their lcm times their gcd thus the smallest possible value of n is the lcm of n1 and n2 divided by the gcd of n1 and n2 this is the smallest fundamental period we can obtain for the sum of two periodic discrete time sequences x1 with fundamental period n1 and x2 with fundamental period n2 also note that if n1 and n2 are co-prime if their gcd is equal to one then what we have in the numerator is the lcm and in this particular case it will be the product the fundamental period is indeed the product n1 and n2 if n1 and n2 are relatively prime so if we have a discrete time sequence with fundamental period two and another discrete time sequence with a fundamental period three then the sum of these two sequences is periodic and the fundamental period is six if the gcd of n1 and n2 is not equal to one n1 and n2 are not relatively prime then the fundamental period may be something less than the lcm of n1 and n2 simple example if x1 is the sequence one zero one zero and so on x2 is the sequence zero one zero one and so on each one of these two sequences is periodic with the fundamental period two but the sum is the constant sequence which has a fundamental period one in this case we have the lcm of two and two is two and the gcd of two and two is two and n can be one and in fact n the fundamental period of the sum is equal to one a more sophisticated example is this one so this is the signal x1 and it has a period of six so we have those six samples repeated to the left and to the right n1 is equal to six this is the periodic sequence x2 and its fundamental period n2 is equal to 15 we have those 15 samples repeated to the left and to the right now if we sum them we have like two four four six six three three five five seven this is the sum of these 10 samples and they will repeat two four four six six three three five five seven these two signals have a sum that is 10 periodic that has a fundamental period of 10 n1 is 6 n2 is 15 the gcd is equal to 3 and the lcm is 30 the lcm by the gcd is 10 and in fact in this case this ratio is the fundamental period of x1 plus x2 generally speaking the fundamental period of the sum can be this ratio of the lcm to the gcd times v so long as the lcm of n1 and n2 is a multiple of this quantity because we have shown that if we sum two periodic sequences the lcm is a period and the lcm must be a multiple of the fundamental period so n can take this form so long as the lcm divided by v times the ratio is a positive integer this means that v must be a divisor of the gcd so the general form of n is that n is equal to the lcm of n1 and n2 divided by the gcd of n1 and n2 and this gcd in the denominator can be divided by v which is a factor of the gcd or we can simply say that the possible values of the fundamental period of the sum is the lcm of n1 and n2 divided by a factor of the gcd this factor can be one and can possibly be the gcd of n1 and n2 itself if n1 is 36 n2 is 225 the gcd is nine and the gcd has factors one three and nine the lcm is 900 generally speaking if we are just given x1 with period 36 and x2 with period 225 the sum is periodic and the possible values of the fundamental period of the sum are 900 over one or 900 over 3, which is 300, or 900 over 9, which is 100.